you guys welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel I have a pretty exciting one today so I just got back from drag racing this past weekend and I've been getting kind of back into the daily driving with the car but this time it's a little bit different because we had that 3600 stall circle D converter in there now as you guys saw on the drag strip that converter was working wonders we were launching super super hard and the car was immediately starting out in boost but daily driving is gonna be a lot different RPMs are gonna be different the shifting is gonna be different pretty much everything's gonna be different I've already experienced it a little bit on my drive home and I also drove it to work the other day but other than that I haven't gotten much experience with the new converter and daily driving but today I'm gonna to be showing you guys kind of that POV and show you the different way that the car is shifting now and how much higher you have to bring the RPMs to even move the car people who may not be familiar with me or the car I'll just quickly go through the car this is Stangri my 2016 Mustang GT it is P1 SC Pro Charge running about 10 pounds of boost got the big red blow-off valve that makes this thing sound like an absolute jet <laughs> It comes to horsepower it's kind of a mystery because i did take it to get dyno this past weekend and it dynoed at 646 horsepower which is a little bit weird because the car turned around and ran a 10-2 at the track So you kind of know what's going on. Here's the engine bay. Clearly we have the Pro Charger right here. Again, P1SC. We did take the intake off. We have a inlet guard on. This gives us another pound of boost actually. As far as our pulley setup, we are running the 4.75, but we are lowering that down to throw another two pounds of boost. As far as our fuel system goes, you can see right here, we are running a four innovations return style fuel system. It is a triple pump. So far the thing is working wonders and doing its job, but using so much gas in the process. I take off and show you guys the daily driving. We gotta give you a little start up. It's not gonna be a cold, cold start, but it'll be a, a chilly start, we'll say. The exhaust setup I have is actually fairly simple. I didn't wanna go with the Corsa Extremes. I feel like everybody goes with those, and they were also a little bit on the raspier side, and I wasn't a huge fan. So I decided to go a little bit of a different route. So what we have currently is stainless power long tube headers with a cat delete, a Steeda H pipe to hopefully deepen the tone, and then we have a Roush axle back. I did have a full complete Roush cat back, but I parted ways with the X pipe because I, whenever we went catless, I really didn't want that extra rasp. So we went ahead and switched over to Steeda H pipe to hopefully deepen that up. And I think it did a fantastic job. As we are now up to temp, so we can take you guys on that ride. Guys, this is a 2016, so this is not the 10 speed. This is a 6R80, the six speed auto. It does shift a little weird. Like I said, it kind of hangs up in the RPMs. It has taken a little bit of getting used to. I'm gonna show you guys, we are in drive. It's gonna drive a little bit weird. If you have a 6R80, you're gonna immediately be able to tell that it just kinda hangs up in the RPMs. As you see, it just doesn't really wanna shift until you're getting around 3,000 RPMs. Like we're going 40 and we're just, as you see, it's just sitting there up in the RPMs. It's, it's definitely weird. It's gonna take some getting used to. When I'm on the strip, it shifts a lot more like a 10 speed. Uh, obviously without the 10 gears, but it does shift a lot more like the 10 speed instead of dropping in RPMs it, it really just hangs up there and it keeps your RPMs high So I really do like that aspect of it because obviously it's gonna save your times and it's gonna you know Make you run quicker. We do have a little bit of a straight road right here So I can probably give you guys a little bit of the a little bit of the mustard Let's see we can probably go from second this thing will take off bit of spinning but she she's moving as tempting as it is that's not what this video is about this isn't about the speed this is about the daily driving so let's get back to that you guys once again the kind of taking off it's just a little bit weird hanging up there in gears you can't even really hear it change gears but it is it is changing them So it's not, it's not a crazy, crazy difference, and it's still doable for such a high stall. Now, I've seen people daily drive higher, but this is a, this is a significant difference from the, the 2,000 RPM stall that this car comes with stock. This was a question that I asked myself, so I'm sure the people that are clicking on this video are probably wondering the same thing. 
Um, does it hurt your gas mileage? Yes, yes it does. Normally when you're driving around, obviously it doesn't take as much work to get the car going, but with this high stall, it is gonna take a little bit more work to actually get the car moving, and it does hang up higher in RPMs, so when you're hanging up in higher RPMs, you are gonna get a little bit worse gas mileage. For me, it's kind of hard to notice because I'm having such a significant change in gas mileage either way because I just switched to E85 and that triple pump fuel system. So I'm already going straight down the drain either way. can't help it. I just got the car back after not having it for a month, so I'm having a little bit of fun. Forgive me. As far as converters go, there's a lot of different directions that you can take. It's not something you can just go out and buy a random one and throw it on the car because it fits. There's a lot of different routes you can go for the different setups you have or might go to. Personally, almost made the mistake of buying one just because it was, it was convenient and I found one in stock. They were telling me it was gonna take upwards of six weeks to get the one that I would need to order. So I was like, oh, I'll just buy one that fits. And I'm really glad I didn't because I got one that was made specifically for my setup. As I showed you guys already, I have a Pro Charger, which is a centrifugal supercharger, and it kind of works like a turbo, you could say. Um, so a lot of that power comes in the higher RPMs. You get most of your power in the higher RPMs. The boost kicks in in the higher RPMs. My boost kicks in at about 3,500 RPMs. So whenever you're launching off of the line, it would be really, really nice to be able to launch while you're already in boost. So, whereas with a root style setup, you get a lot of that power down low. So you don't necessarily want to start up in the high 3000 RPM. You're launching off the line at a lower RPM. You're going to have that nice torque. Whereas with me, I'm basically, I'd say full bolt on off of the line up until I hit 3500 RPMs. I actually have a clip right here. I'll show you guys. So as you can see, it's kind of sluggish up to around 3,500 RPMs and then it takes off. So now when I launch from the line, I'm launching already in that boost and I don't have to work that build up. It really helps your 60 foot, really helps your zero to 60. The converter really, really helps you on the strip. The night and day difference from the strip, I was not expecting that. I literally got the car back with the new converter and the fuel system an hour before the strip. So my first time really testing the car out and getting a feel for the converter was at the strip. As much as it really, really sucked to break my car and blow the torque converter on my very first pass. It's actually kind of a blessing in disguise because that, you know, forced me to upgrade and get the Circle D converter. And now here we are with a car that is just so much more of a beast. Like this does not feel like the same car. It does not drive like the same car. It's so much better in so many different ways. All right, there's a straightaway. I can't, I can't not, right? I can't not do it. Hey, fine. I'll do it. Woo! A little slippy slidey. We just walked him through the build, told him exactly what we needed, and they pointed us in this direction. And of course, I was very not excited to wait the six weeks for the build. Uh, but luckily, I found somebody on Facebook Marketplace that had one brand new that actually made the mistake that I told you guys to watch out for. So he found that converter on Facebook Marketplace never installed and instead of waiting that six weeks he just went ahead and got it but it did not work for his setup you know he had a root style setup and whenever he was going to throw the converter in and he was talking around you know people told him that's that's not going to really help you out your power you get a lot of that low end torque so you stalling up to 36 3700 rpms 
is not gonna really benefit you. His loss was my gain. I did not have to wait the six weeks, but it definitely would have been the route to go if I couldn't find it because at the end of the day, if you're spending all this money, you know, they're not really cheap. If you're spending all of that money, you need to get the one that's gonna be best for your car. I know it sucks to wait, but you just gotta get the one that's gonna be best for you, or you're gonna, you're gonna regret it in the long run. Back to the kind of main point of this video is can you daily drive with a high stall converter? The answer is yes. Technically, you can daily drive anything. Now, if you're in a car like this that you wanna daily drive, you're probably not worrying too much about the gas mileage because if you were, you wouldn't have that car. Uh, your gas mileage is gonna go down a little bit. Like I said, and like you saw, the RPMs do hang a little bit high whenever you're just starting out. But I did drive it home the other day about four hours and I had no issues. It's really just kind of getting off the line. Once, you're, once you start moving, that's the only kind of thing where you notice the converter and the shifting because it, it kind of hangs up there like you saw. But other than that, man, it's it's pretty much the same car. I'm really, really happy with the converter. I'm really happy with the fuel system. I'm really happy with the way the car came out. If you're looking to better your times at the strip, I definitely recommend a converter. It tremendously helped out my times. The one thing holding you back is being worried about the daily driving. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, it's not that much of a difference. It's not a huge deal. Definitely should pull the trigger. At the end of the day, the benefits on the strip definitely outweigh anything that could go negative on the street. I have not had any issues, any complaints. Yeah, you use a little bit more gas, but at the end of the day, that's not really what you're getting the car for. If you were getting a car for gas mileage, you're not gonna be in something like this. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any other questions about the car, any things you wanna see, just leave a comment down below. I'm more than happy to make videos on it. You know, this is a new channel. I'm open to any ideas, whatever you guys wanna see. Be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps me out. And if you guys are new here, please subscribe. Got some crazy big plans for the car, crazy big plans for the channel. It's gonna be really, really fun. So you guys should join the journey and watch along. That's gonna do it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.